Exciting guru with you. I'm excited to talk to our uh, next guest, former L.A. Laker, five-time NBA champion, one of the greatest defensive players of all time, Michael Cooper. Michael, we had Robert Parrish on earlier this week, and I gave him a chief. So I guess I got to give you a coo. coo. <laughs> right. hey, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Hey, everybody's weighing in. Not, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of you know uh, our generation, because I'm in I'm in yours, uh, has a lot to say about Draymond Green and and what he would or wouldn't do back in in your day. What? Just what are your thoughts on Draymond Green uh, as a player and his approach to the game? Uh, first of all, thank you guys for having me on. Really appreciate this. Sure. Um, Draymond Green is a unique individual, uh, unique in the aspect of like a Dennis Rodman, you know, a player that and now at, in today's game can play all, defend all five positions. I think his most valuable asset to the Warriors is his tenacity, and his command of leadership for the team. He he holds every player accountable for their actions on the court, as well as himself. And for today's game, Draymond's good. I think if he had played with us back in the day, he probably would have been like me, being able to play defend four positions as opposed to five, because I don't think he could have guarded Kareem or Moses Malone or Artis Gilmore, just to name a few of those big-time centers there. But he is a truly unique player in today's game. And he's the reason why the Warriors are as far as they are now. Coop, that's interesting you bring that up because right now, you know, it, it's so much vitriol and hate on the Internet when you try to compare eras and, and older players chiming in. And we were just talking about maybe it might be the money. But you sound like you're coming from a, a place of love, like it's a fraternity. So with that said, when I bring up Steph Curry, and it's not just because we're in the Bay Area, Coop, he's not doing it with LeBron size or Magic or Kareem. He, he's done it from being you know, a smaller player. Can you describe when you watch him and the heights he's reached, just how Michael Cooper puts Steph Curry into perspective? Well, you know what? Steph is uh, probably, uh, and I've been around a lot of shooters. I mean, his father, Dale, was a great shooter. Um, uh, Mark Price, uh, just to name a few. But uh, Steph Curry probably the greatest shooter ever played this game. Reggie Miller, uh, with the form and the way he scores, and the way he gets open. You know, a lot of players are good when they have the ball in their hand. They can make a move, step back jumper, a la Kobe Bryant. But Steph can pass it, go down, set a pick, come off a pick, get the ball, the shot's not there, pass it. He's constant motion. And you have to appreciate that from uh, a layman watching the game. I hate it as a defensive player because you got to chase this guy's ass around the court, man. That's the way you go. <laughs> but, you know, uh, for a little guy of his stature, and Steph's not little in the sense of like a Muggsy Bowles or, or uh, 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 Webb. Spud Webb. But yeah. for a player that that has small stature, and I, I kind of uh, uh, line him along like Mark Price. Back in the 80s, Mark Price was not a big guy. Mm. His coach, Steph Curry, was not a big guy, but they had that ability to get open. And all they need is that nanosecond to get their shot off. And you know what? There's not a lot of people that could have played in the 80s, and, you know, just for me, Steph Curry's a player that could have played back then because in order to um, stop someone, you got to catch them. And with his constant yeah. motion, he would have fit well with, say, like a team with the Lakers or like a team with the old Celtics, just mm. constant movement, a great for the Phoenix Suns, a team that's had a lot of down picks for their shooters. So Steph Curry is a unique player and a great player. Yeah, that's a great point, Michael, about his ability to move off the ball. Michael Cooper joining us on 95.7. All right, I got a true or false for you, Michael. Is it true that at some point in the mid-'80s, Larry Bird in the offseason specifically worked on another move because you gave him some problems defending him in the low post? <laughs> I like to think it's true. Hell yeah! I mean, I can't have that guy Not, every night. You know, he got that. All, he got that little players. lefty. Yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. No, he's got that little lefty over the middle. But then he he got that little baseline half hook because you you did a nice job against him. 
<laughs> but you know what? All players, I think that's what makes great players, is that you don't just settle on your game. You have to look at Michael Jordan, uh, for one, you know, who played, was very athletic throughout his career, and as he slowed down, the athleticism slowed down a little bit. Jordan developed a low-post game, a mid-range game. So Bird did the same thing. I mean, he was just a player that adapted to what teams did against him that, that season. If it was successful, he did it on another level to become more successful. If he failed, like in 85 when we kicked their ass, then he had to go to another uh, game plan. So, um, you know, great players are always evolving and turning their game into something else, and that's why they're called legendary players. Coop, my man just mentioned to you when he went introducing you, you're a five-time NBA champ, five times NBA All-Defense, and I'm not just saying this because you're on the, our show, but you should already be in the Hall of Fame. When, when you hear that, is that something that you think about? You know what? Uh, the Hall of Fame is uh, something I, I, that even for me to be mentioned and being one of the finalists, I never thought my journey or my road through the basketball and especially through the NBA would lead to the doorsteps of that. But, um, you know, it's a great honor. And I do hope one day that I'm able to get in there among some of the best. But you know what? I feel I'm already in there. You know, James Worthy, Magic, and Kareem are in there. And those are three guys that, especially Worthy and, Kare- and Magic, I watched these guys come into the NBA and just be good basketball players. And, you know, they were great. They were good college players, but they came in the NBA and their game evolved. And to see Magic and Worthy come in great players and leave as legendary Hall of Fame players, um, I like to think I had a little bit to do with that because I was going through the motions with them in practice. But, you know, what? when they're in there, I feel like I'm in there. And if for, uh, but the basketball guys shine on me one day to where Michael Cooper gets inducted, I'm going to enjoy that. Michael Cooper joining us on 95-7 The Game. Uh, Michael, you obviously played in the Boston Garden in NBA Finals, and the talk is always about how role role players uh, play on the road. Uh, We know Steph's been there and Draymond and Clay, but they've got some role players. They've got a young player, Jordan Poole, Gary Payton II, uh, Otto Porter's never played in the Finals. What are they in for tonight in Boston? Well, you know what? It's not so much the arena because they got that real nice arena now. Back when we played, they had that that uh, terrible <laughs> shithole place. Excuse my language <laughs> at the old Boston Garden, where it was just terrible, terrible place to play. If it was a uh, red, you could, when we went there in the in the winter time, he would cut the air conditioner on, open yeah. the windows, and in the summertime, he cut the heat on and close the windows. So. But now I don't think they pull those tricks. But these guys, got, what you have to be aware of is the Boston fans. They are, are very uh, knowledgeable basketball fans. They come out there. They support their team 150%. They're, they are that sixth player that every, every team would like to have. And, you know, Golden State has that in their new arena. But coming here, it's a different environment. The fans can get on your nerves. They're going to be saying things, shouting things. But just their... Uh, when Boston get on them runs, that's what they're going to have to be very, very, very cautious of because when Boston get on a 6-0, 8-0, 10 run, that crowd really starts uh, making a lot of noise and starts yelling. So if you haven't been in the NBA final and you just named a couple of your young players, that's what they're going to be going against. And it seems like it don't seem like anything, but it is awesome when you get in that arena. Coop, let me ask you about Andre Iguodala, who hopefully the Warriors will have his services, but if they don't uh, right now, to me, I tell my partner, the new sixth man is Gary Payton the second. Do you think six men get enough love for what they do and, you know, not to start the game, but to be able to ready to come in and, and contribute right away? You think they get enough love? Well, I, I like to think they do. That's why they have a six-man award. But usually that award is given to someone that's scoring a lot of points, which yeah. I don't think that's what the six-man is about. Mm. I look at the six-man as being like the old. And John Havlicek, again, being a Boston fan growing up when I was young, uh, watch John Havlicek, who did everything for his team. They need a ball handler. They need a defender. They need a passer. So the six-man, to me, is somebody that's watching the game, analyzing the game, seeing how the officials are calling the game, seeing what we're doing well offensively, see what we're doing well defensively or not doing well on either end. And then when it's your turn to come in, you go in and take that game up to another level. And, you know, one of the things I always was said is whatever I went in, if the score was tied, when I came out of the game, I wanted to be tied. If the score, we were up by 10, I wanted to come out of the game, I wanted to be up by 15. If we were down, we wanted to be up. So the sixth man is a really a, 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 it's an art 
to being a sixth or seventh man because those are players that get in the game after the game has started, and your role is going to expand depending on what the team is doing well or not doing well out on the floor. So I think the sixth man is sometimes underrated, but I think it's becoming more of a, a fashionable statement to be a sixth man because everybody's looking at starters. You know, that six, seven, eight guy on the team that's going to play good minutes have to be ready to play and come in and make a significant contribution. Michael, I got to ask you before I let you go. I know, I know, Jerry West isn't happy with the with Thank the Showtime document. Well, it's not a documentary. The Showtime show, um, winning time. What What are your yeah, uh, winning time? Just what do you think? Well, uh, first of all, the Lakers asked us not to watch it, so I haven't I haven't mm. seen an episode or anything. I hear my friends and people texting me. My wife sneaks upstairs and watches a little bit of it. <laughs> I, I just really hate the fact that we depicted Jerry West and Dr. Buck and Magic. Jerry West was nothing like that. Jerry West was probably one of the most calmest pe- persons in our organization. I never, ever saw Jerry West with jeans on, drinking or cursing. I mean, every now and then we'll say a bad word, you know, but the way they have him and my friends tell me about it is just, it's not him. That's not him at all. And you know what? It's very entertaining, that show, for people But to uh, characterize people out of what they are, that's the thing that hurts. And Dr. Buck, I mean, one of the probably the most smartest men in this game, he's the one that started cable TV with Prime Ticket out here. That's right. He's the one that kind of emulated the Dallas Cowboys with the Laker girls, the Dallas Chili. He brought the He made it fun for the entertainers for us to entertain them. And then Magic, I mean, you know, it's Magic, and he has his his, uh, own documentary out called Call Me Magic, and I heard some pieces in there. But you know what? That guy was young, single, rich, famous, and, I mean, he was doing what many of us probably, but 95% of the men would have probably done. So uh, it, it is an entertaining show, I heard, but it's nothing that I take for valid. Uh, I heard they made me look kind of good, and I, I don't really care about that, but just the people that I really admire and hold as close, dear friends, Dr. Buss, Jerry West, and Magic, it's just not, it wasn't good. Cool. Yeah, we love it, man. Loyalty. Hey, thank you so <laughs> much, Michael, for joining us. Really appreciate it, and uh, good luck to you, man. Hey, listen, you know what? I'm not real big fans of Boston or Golden State, but in this case here, I'm going with the Warriors. Let's go Warriors. Right. There you go. He will take want Boston it. to get another yeah, one Yeah, I, I got you, yeah. Michael. I got you. Thanks for, the, thanks for your time, man. That's sweet. See you guys. Michael Cooper.